Hey YouTube, this is Zach with Achilles Financial and today I want to talk about Bank of America stock but in particular the banking industry as a whole because today the Federal Reserve announced they are having a set end date for when banks are going to be able to issue share buybacks which means they will be buying back their own stock as well as increased dividends and these banks I anticipate will definitely be doing so. One of the things I want to highlight though is that the banking industry and especially the big four banks that we'll be talking about today are all trading at all-time highs and they are outside of the realm of fundamentals where they traditionally like to hang out. That being said, with the reopening of the economy, there is a lot of optimism and one of the things that's been hurting on growth stocks in particular, the idea that rates are rising is actually good for banking. Now keep in mind that Bank of America is one of the first positions I ever took for stocks. It is one of my larger positions from a financial perspective, but the reason that is is because I bought 100 shares four years ago and I have steadily just had the dividend reinvestment program on and it's just been consistently adding to that position. That being said, as we talk about Bank of America and some of these other companies, I'd like to highlight some of the differences between the companies and who I think is a worthwhile investment. Keep in mind, this is just my opinion and I am just some random guy on YouTube, definitely not a financial advisor, so please do your own due diligence. Within the stocks that I have up here, I have talked about Bank of America, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup. The reason why I don't really talk about US Bancorp is because I think if you're going to be going with the top four, you stick with the top four in the industry. There are a lot of regional sized banks that I think have a lot of value. However, I prefer to stick with the largest banks in the United States. And if you're going to be doing that, I'm gonna stick with those top four. Now, when you look at some of the metrics they have down here, especially from price to earnings ratio or from a PE ratio, price to sales ratio, uh, you get some pretty lofty valuations compared to where may, we may have been historically. Now, banks trade very fundamentally. Historically, the classic PE ratio, price to earnings ratio, has always been right at 12, was the number that they really like to get to. That being said, if you're looking at these numbers right here, you have to remember that revenue growth off of the past 12 months has been down pretty significantly compared to years prior. These banks have been able to stay afloat and in some cases continue to make record profits by utilizing trading revenue, which has been abnormally high. That's why you're probably watching this video because you like the idea of trading and looking at this information. Traditionally, the banks have always been strong dividend stocks with steady growth. That's one of the reasons why Bank of America by share volume is the largest holding in Warren Buffett's portfolio. So keep in mind when we look at this historically, these are slightly overvalued. However, if you think that earnings are going to increase with rising interest rates, that means that this could, they could catch up to these valuations and even push them higher. From an overall market cap perspective, you can see that we've got right at 157.6 billion for Wells Fargo. If you look at these numbers, you may say, hey, I like the fact that they're smaller, I like the fact that they haven't gone up as much, and I like the fact that they do still offer a dividend. Keep in mind though, that overall, I'm not personally a fan of Wells Fargo. I think that this is a company that's been continued to be plagued by scandals, and I don't think that they've made the appropriate adjustments. With that being said, for the remainder of this video, I'll continue to emphasize I personally don't like Wells Fargo. Well, I think there's a lot of potential with Bank of America, JP Morgan, and Citigroup. All that being said, the reason I initially went for Bank of America way back when was because they were trading at the lowest price. At the time, they were like $22 a share. So when I bought them, it was because I could afford their shares compared to JP Morgan at the time was in the 70s. So when you're looking at these stocks, you have to remember what is the overall strategy. Now, I really like Bank of America because again, from a share price perspective, trading at $37 a share, I can get 100 shares and continue to sell covered calls. However, at this point in time, again, working full-time job, you do have the capability to meet that same point in time with the JP Morgan or Citigroup, despite the fact that they trade at right at $130 and $75 respectively. So what are we gonna do? What are we gonna look at when we're talking about the companies as a whole? The key things I wanna talk about is profitability. 
So some of the ways that these companies have continued to go is from a profit margin perspective is JP Morgan and Bank of America have continued to do a good job, not only growing revenue, but becoming more profitable as they grew revenue. The current CEO, Brian Mahoyan, I probably butchered his last name, of Bank of America has done an incredible job cutting costs over the past few years and increasing that profit margin. Because of that, I think they're in a prime space going forward to continue making money as that loan volume increases. Because of that, I think that we're going to continue to see heavy growth on the earnings side. The lagger for this, who I still like, is Citigroup over here in column number four. I really like the potential for Citigroup to grow continuing forward, especially from an overall revenue perspective. If they can increase that profit margin by as little as 2%, then that makes the earnings growth positive on the year. So that's what we're looking for going forward. I do want to highlight all of these companies did very poorly from a revenue growth perspective. The reason being is because interest rates were basically near zero all of last year. Mortgage at under 3% really doesn't do anything for a bank. What they're really going for is commercial and industrial loans or just commercial real estate loans. And that industry overall did not suffer as much as you would expect. It's definitely been limited to geographic areas. However, it is one that has continued to have a lot of stipulations surrounding it, and there's been a lot of uncertainty. The other side of this earnings and profit that I want to talk about is the fact that all of these banks had to increase their allowance for loan losses. Because banks have to have a certain amount of money set aside in case you don't pay back that loan, or in case a business doesn't pay back that loan, they've had to reduce their exposure from a loan perspective and put more money aside. Now, some of those restrictions are going away, so banks are able to go out and invest more money via issuing loans. And that's what they're looking to do. However, these banks, with JP Morgan in December saying they have a $30 billion stock buyback plan, anticipate buying back their stock. The reason why this is very beneficial for a shareholder is if you look at the summary for Bank of America, they currently have shares outstanding of $8.6 billion. If they were to go out and issue a, and I anticipate this will continue to come, a $20 billion share buyback plan, what they would do is they would take that current price, so right now $38, you divide that by $20 billion, then you're able to get whatever that number is. We'll call it a, we'll say in fact that they just go out and get 100 million shares. You reduce the shares outstanding to 8.5 billion shares outstanding, which gives you the capability to have a a, the same market cap or a similar market cap, but your ownership is now higher. This is very good for a shareholder. The other thing is they're able to do now is they're able to increase their dividends. They were not able to do that and they won't be able to until June 30th of this year. However, I talked about this in a number of my other videos. Bank of America, I like when they have that 3% dividend yield, and this is something that they had when they were back around $22, $23 a share, which you can see all the way up until they really announced that other bank dividend hike that they were hovering around that 3% mark. Again, they're up 20% year to date. Now, I think that they need to have those dividends catch up, and I think that they have the net income to do that if you look at that positive cash flow available here. Again, your total net income, they're still bringing in $4.8 billion in Q3, $5.4 billion in Q4. Keep in mind that on this approach right here, they're still paying those dividends, $18 million, again, in the values in millions. Your gross dividend that you saw in Q3 was right at $1.57 billion, and the same in Q4. So those dividends keep coming, and this is a great way that you can enable DRIP or Dividend Reinvestment Program to have those shares continue to have you purchase additional shares. All that being said, from a what would I buy perspective, I obviously am a holder of Bank of America. I think that JP Morgan is best in class for certain. And that being said, they're the one leading the way. I think that there's the most potential for Citigroup because they have a lot of digitization going on right now but they just don't have it all together yet. And from a long-term investment, not short-term investment perspective, I think that they'll be able to get things together. One of the things that's really hurting them is they lost like $700 million or $500 million because essentially someone fat fingered different transferred and they transferred it to someone and the bank or the person holding it said, hey, I basically wanna keep that. 
it was a loan repayment, so they were technically able to, according to a judge, but I wouldn't want to be in the situation of the person who accidentally lost the company. Like It was like 500 to $700 million. So all that being said, there's a lot going on in these companies, and they were checking out, but I definitely think the Fed setting a set date for those dividend increases, as well as those share buybacks, is when we're going to start seeing that happen. So it may be a good idea to start loading up now, despite the fact that these are all at all time highs. I definitely don't think that banks are short term flips. However, they do very well on the dividend dash covered call strategy that I've illustrated in earlier videos where you buy the stock for the dividend and you set your covered calls outside of those dividend time periods. So you're able to get that quarterly increase in income and continue building out those portfolios. So check out these companies let me know in the comments below what you think and if you find this content helpful please leave a like and subscribe thanks talk to you later